Hi guys, welcome back to the UK Grad 2020 podcast. Today I'm going to be talking to the directors that are featuring in this year's Grad Fest. We'll be discussing the plays, how it is working on Zoom and also how's lockdown life? Up first is the gorgeous Amy Nick who is directing and just so happened to write the Zoom sessions. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. You can catch the Zoom sessions at 7pm on Monday the 6th of July. That was a well busy morning, literally not stopped. You know when someone says that they've not stopped and you're like, I'm lying. <laughs> I actually haven't stopped today. I believe you, don't worry. Thanks. I believe you. Um, how's the how's, uh, rehearsals going other than Zoom Island? Sick, honestly so sick. I had a rehearsal with um, Taylor 2 webcams yesterday and it was like an hour and a half long and we just got so much done and the vibe was amazing and I came off and I just kind of sat here for ages and I was like oh my god that was so good um, and then I couldn't stop messaging, messaging them all like it was so good and I just had one with um, Karen and Alistair and the pair of them is like they're so funny and um, so it's going really well and I'm honestly loving it that's just, so good. Ah, I love it. I love it when a plant suits comes. me right to the ground. This directing business does. I just oh. love it. Yeah, I love being bossy. <laughs> so, here's question number one. Tough one. What's your name? Where did you train? <laughs> uh, I'm Amy Nick, and I trained at London Studio Centre. Woohoo! And you are directing your own work. Tell us a little about it, please. I am. So um, my play is called The Zoom Sessions and the common theme amongst all of the parts is that they all address the fact that they're on Zoom mm -hmm. and, and most of them are normal, normal life situations that have now changed onto Zoom. So very day-to-day -day business. And I originally started writing them as little sketches that people in, at Studio Centre could perform and we could have a bit of fun. Mm -hmm. And then as I sort of wrote more, I was like, mm, okay, but it's going to be really cool if I can put them, put them all together. Um, and now I have. Ooh. So, yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Like, I... I um... I'm lucky enough to be involved in uh, Zoom Island and it's mm -hmm. so fun. It's so silly. And I mean, it's a character that I would not consider myself. It's not my casting type really. So I think this is what's the beauty of this. It's giving everyone an opportunity to try characters they may not have tried before because yeah, you know, it's, it, it's experimental and, and it's fun. And they're all, most of the characters, correct me if I'm wrong, are, are all pretty much caricatures. Oh yeah. So, they can be heightened it. and ridiculous and anything over the top anything ridiculous and you're so right doing these characters I think a lot of people share that feeling that oh I've actually never done this before and this is kind of fun because I'm not usually doing this I mean the it's all it's all comedy it is yeah. it is all humor and I think a lot of people maybe haven't done a lot of that before because mm. that is quite a confident thing to put yourself out there and do comedy yeah so it's really great that all these because I have a pretty big cast so at least like 15 or more people are getting to try something new which is just amazing and all in the comfort of their own home exactly <laughs> is this your first time directing or have you directed before I as part of our dissertation process at Studio Centre you can choose to do a practical um, dissertation so I did that obviously mm -hmm. and a lot of it most people choose to do um, a dance based or a movement based piece and I ended up doing a little sketch which was not my first intention when I started my dissertation process but then I just kind of got to rehearsals on our first day of rehearsals and I was like oh I'm the director and then I was like cool so then we just started and I think in all honesty I think the, the biggest thing at that point was the fact that all these people performing for me in my dissertation they were all my friends I mean one of them was my housemate the other three I'd been in classes with for, for three years I had no qualms about telling them no I don't like it when you do that you need to do that 
So it was just a great place. Now that I look back, when I reflect on it, it was a great place for me to start directing because yeah. I was already in my comfort zone. Out of every single rehearsal, I was walking home and I was like, wow, I love doing that. And then I spoke to someone and I said, I think I was kind of meant to do this. And they were like, yeah, yeah. it fits, doesn't it? And then I said, yeah. And then we did the dissertation and it just got everyone who watched it just loved it. And then it was at that point that I thought, okay, let's do some more. That's so good. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> and um, how, how do you find working on Zoom? I kind of like it. I think it's I think it's really fun because it feels very much like a learning process from both sides yeah there's you know the fun things you don't have to worry about you need to go off stage left because then you need to you just click a button and you're gone (laughs) this is this is the beauty it's also kind of nice because there is so much there's also a lot of flexibility Mm -hmm. around rehearsals and oh can we just move it a bit yeah of course we can you know no stress I mean the amount of times I've brought I've brought me tea to rehearsals (laughs) I've sat and you know, in my pajamas, you can't do that in real life. Well, you expected already. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe one day. Maybe one, one day. day I'll turn I, up in my dressing listen, gown. We've seen Corona. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything and it will be happen. me turning up to a rehearsal in my onesie. <laughs> I'm an advocate for that, indeed. I'm so excited. I think everyone needs a bit of humour at the minute, don't they? Oh, if you don't laugh, you'll cry. If you don't laugh, you'll cry. I think I should get that tattooed. <laughs> maybe that'll be maybe that'll Cramps be my post lockdown tattoo. It fit nicely. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just small at the back. Gorgeous. Yeah. I'll see you soon. Cool. And you know Thank where you I so am. Much. I do indeed online. She will be. <laughs> of course, I'm never not online. <gasps> no, she's not. She doesn't stop this girl. <laughs> Neither do you. We're all hard-working bunnies. Right, so thanks have a so good much. Day. I'll speak to you soon. Yeah. Bye. Next up, I had the pleasure of chatting to Georgia Stinton, who is directing Pomona. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm not bad. How are you? Yeah. Um. Oh my God, my hair's an absolute mess. It's fine. Um, totally fine. That's the beauty of podcasts. Can't see. Yeah. Anything. You can catch this show on Sunday the 5th of July at 7pm. Who on earth are you and where on earth did you train? So I'm Georgia Stinton. People call me Stints for short though, um, which is normally what I respond to, but I'm, I trained at Lane Theatre Arts, mm-hmm. uh, graduating this year. Sad. Amazing. Well, yes, sad, but also congratulations. Um, Thank you. So tell us about what you're doing as part of GradFest. So you're directing, correct? Mm-hmm. I'm directing Pomona, Alistair McDowell's play, um, and I, I chose it. So about four, four and a half years ago, we did it like in a, in a class once, just like a read through for a few mm-hmm. weeks. And I wanted to get so much more involved in it rather than just like reading it through. And I wanted to do like the whole shabam. I wanted to do the whole production. I never got, never had the chance. When this opportunity kind of came about, I just, I leapt for it. And I was like, I know exactly kind of what I wanted to do. I had two in mind. Pomona kind of happened and then it all just happened so quickly. And like the cast was there and it's set. And then it was like, oh, I've... Hey, I'm scheduling rehearsals. Like, here we go. Yeah. It's been a whirlwind. And this is your first time directing Yes, it is. Yeah, so, I, uh, so why, um, how come you are will- wanting to dip your feet into the world of directing? You know, when you're at college yeah. and you'll be in a class and it'll kind of, you, you get put into groups and do little productions, produce a little five minute thing. I am always the bossy one. I'm always <laughs> the one that's like, guys, this idea and let's do this and let's try this. Like, and given this opportunity, I- I'm thriving. Like mm-hmm. after the first Zoom call us directors had, talking about it and being involved with all of these people that have got the same motives the same like drive it was it it just I I couldn't not yeah so I love it and this has absolutely made me double check the fact that I want to direct Mm. in the future yeah I know exactly what you mean about being the the leader that was me in um, (laughs) GCSE drama people would just look at me like so what do we do? And I'm like, and you're just like thriving and you're bubbling and yeah, no, yeah, I get that. Can you just like summarize Pomona? What are the audience going to expect when they watch it? Oh, so it's, um, the audience are going to have to bear with 
it won't you won't understand it for like the first half but you have to remember everything and it's it's so dark and it kind of it has moments of oh like and you you really have to follow it and go along with it and I think so it's the character of Ollie and she's trying to find her sister Mm -hmm. and it's just the story and of who people are individually and what kind of what they play what part they play in it which is um yeah I love it and then it gets to the end and you're like oh oh and that's why and there it is and yeah Yeah. um, all ties together Mm -hmm. and how have you found working on zoom it's new for everyone really yeah it's not the future but the fact that we have been able to do this is so amazing and I think I love the open-mindedness of everyone I mean if you're like on lesson or doing something that kind of people don't really want to be there for it's like oh, like you can kind of feel the energy and the feel that people mm. don't want to be there and they leave and da, da da but like we're making it work it's not the best like condition and I would so love I would much rather be in a room with them all mm. um, as would everyone but we can't but we make do with what we have and that's what I find yeah. so magical about this because we're all we're all so we love it yeah yeah and it is all about the we're emphasizing that it's a rehearsed reading and mm-hmm. obviously we'd we prefer if we were all together one day we might be one day we might yeah. be able to put it on at the, <laughs> at the palladium or something honestly yeah <laughs> the grad fringe fest like 20 years later here we are Woo! literally mm-hmm. 2040 watch this space you heard it here yeah <laughs> that's great that is everything i need short and sweet so thanks so much mm-hmm. georgia sorry stints Stints. <laughs> and um how is how's yours going fine 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 it's very much let's talk about this scene okay great and and i find that the more we're going in depth discussing it then naturally the, the way they're delivering the scenes are just a fine I'm, I'm i'm not often having to go right let's do that bit again let's do that bit again because mm-hmm. the text speaks for itself really so it's fine totally totally cool mm-hmm. it's tiring parenting is tiring it is. I mean, I found this on, when was it, Saturday evening? Because I just, I bashed out from like four till eight. And then I was like, I didn't even think that I've got to eat. I've got to have time off. It was yeah. just like, boom, boom, boom. But I mean, of course, you're, you're doing everything else, which is so amazing. But it's awesome. We love it. And so now I'm making it hard for myself by doing this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but why not? You know, if why you're going to go all out, why exactly. not? <laughs> hmm. Well, anyway, I'll let you get on with your sunbathing is that what you were doing or just just yeah well I've uh I've got a singing lesson because I'm still in college I've got a singing lesson um yeah um thank you very much um thank you I'll see you on on Sunday have a great week hope it all goes Bye. bye next up is the fabulous Marina she is over in the states working with her cast who are five hours ahead of her how you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm fine. How's uh, work? Where are you working? Well, I'm a, when I say work, I'm a tutor. So I'm tutoring this little boy. And when I was like, I'm getting held up, it's because he was having tantrums. And so he was like, not wanting to do the work. And I was like, I can't leave until it's done. <laughs> so I was like, I'm just gonna tell her, wait. You can watch. I told my mum I was going on an RE trip on Saturday the 4th of July at 7 p.m. He's a super sweet little boy. It's so, it's like actually really nice because I just go over for like four hours every morning and just tutor and like teach him basic math and English. And because you all, you know it because you did it in first grade, you feel really smart. I mean, I don't know if I'd know it at this stage, but <laughs> maybe. A funny thought. Well, I remember like how weird your brain is at six. Like you think of things in such weird ways. Like everything just seemed like it was a little bit like not real. Because you watch movies. That's what you do. That's what your life is. It's like. Yeah. <laughs> games so it feels like everything is part of this at least I did when I was small I was like everything is like this because like movie plots were always like that and that's just not oh, everything was make-believe for me everything was let's dress up let's role play everything was a nightmare I wonder why I like to act like mm. <laughs> I was just a, a terrible for it and mum and dad would just be like oh, what character do we have what, what's her name today I'd always change my name what's the name today right okay and they'd bless them they'd go along with it and I always used to say I was a shy kid I would always be like yeah I was shy and then I look back I was like no you weren't you were the most obnoxious kid ever I was like that I was just I think I like thought I was the main character like 100% <laughs> I was like I 
am the leading role. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, only time will tell. You'll have your own show a, as soon as possible, as soon as this is over. And then, of course, in typical lockdown Zoom style, everything went wrong. I'm changing Wi-Fi connections. I still can't hear you if you are talking. La 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 Change this Wi-Fi connection. La 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 Hello! Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? You're frozen. Can you hear me? I can hear you! <laughs> Alice! Oh my god. Alice! We disconnected, reconnected, disconnected again probably. Eventually, we got back on track. <laughs> I was like, I can't hear you. I'm reconnecting. What is your name and where did you train? Marina Tavalari at the Guildford School of Acting. Amazing. And tell us about the play you are directing for Gradfest. I am directing a play called I Told My (laughs) 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 That noise was in fact Marina's dog. Don't worry, but I had to keep it in. That's (laughs) safe. One more time. (laughs) Should we do it one more time? Because that was sure. I am directing a play called I Told My Mom I Was Going on an RE trip. Um and it's about a group of women from various different backgrounds and cultures who have all had an abortion. Mm -hmm. It also includes like one woman who's really against abortion and who's experienced miscarriages and a doctor. So it's kind of about gathering different perspectives on this topic. Why did you feel like this play was the right choice to do either in this climate or over zoom like what what made you pick this play i chose this play because i think when we went off of the prompt of an all-female play i think when you create a space that's for females and by females it allows for room to talk about something that is important or specific to that group of people and i picked the play because i i think abortion at this time in some ways we're making really great strides like ireland legalizing really recently and in certain places like in the united states when the pandemic hit um a lot of places closed down their abortion clinic because that i didn't realize they were closing clinics yeah in a lot of states they deemed it as not an essential service oh my okay so they shut it down um in i think it was seven states and then obviously people were like absolutely not and then they reopened again after a little while it to me felt like a blatant slap in the face to all women that live in America. Yeah. And because it's such a time sensitive thing, it is an essential service. And most health cares here don't cover it. An abortion mm-hmm. is fifteen hundred dollars. <sighs> My insurance, like to be specific, the one I have, does not cover abortion unless you're raped. Every single woman in the world has a relationship with abortion. Whether it's that you're afraid of it, whether it's that you'd be willing to do it, whether it's that you're completely against it, or whether it's that you're completely fine with it. Every single woman has a relationship with abortion. It's something that is intrinsically ours. You know what I mean? And that saying that with the complete understanding that there are very different types of women, there are cisgendered women, trans women, gay women, straight women, all along the spectrum. Uh-huh. This issue has always been something that affects womankind. And I think it's something that I wanted to do right now because we're in such a moment of like pivotal societal change mm-hmm. that this is the time to talk about what matters to you. This is one one like brick in a house of all the issues of the way that the world treats women. You yeah. know what I mean? And there's things to take into account, like what the play discusses, obviously, some people can't tell their parents. Some people tell their parents. Some people have to do it all on their own. Some people have friends. It's taking into account those different, not necessarily privi- privileges, but circumstances from different cultures and how those affect those decisions. And I liked the play because it wasn't just one type of woman. It was multiple types of women revolving around the same concept. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And how, how have you found um, using Zoom as a performance space? For this play, I really liked it. What we're choosing to do is having everyone on the whole time, and it's going to be as if it was that Julia, mm-hmm. um, the character who's put together this meeting, 
has been gathering information. She's gathering information from them and testimonies to put together a play. So we're having everyone on the whole time and it's similar to like a support group meeting and people just sharing their stories. Yeah. So for us, it's worked because we sort of ran with the platform as opposed to pushing against it, sure. which mostly because I didn't, I didn't want to add like a second element of like, um, stress with the technology. And I was like, if we're all on and we work with this, so for us, it's been fine. The only issues we've run into are like, oh, internet's cut out. It's been really good. We've worked a lot on like really reaching outwards and like trying to affect people through the screen, trying to affect each other through the screen because we have this block. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like the film completely between us. Like if we were in person, I could look you in the eyes. And right now I can't because I have a screen. Yeah. And that does add a specific challenge. So we've been sort of working through that as a group. I'm really glad we've got such a, every play is so different structure wise, content wise. And, and I think it's going to be a really nice thing. I'm so excited to watch them all. Thank you for our little podcast. I hope you have a great Bye. evening. Oh yes, you too. And I will see you soon. And um, yeah, <laughs> I'm running out of words. I'm tired. Well, have a lovely day and rest up and enjoy work and life and directing and all that jazz. Same to you. Bye, Bye. We got off to a rocky start, but next up is Alex. What a shambles. Catastrophe. It's a conundrum, to say the least. There, I, oh, there you are. Not really, you're frozen. But... Yeah, brilliant. Let it go. Let it go. Just let it go, man. You can watch Luna Gale on Saturday the 11th of July at 7pm as part of Gradfest UK. You're, 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 you're moving in ways that I've never seen before, which is, it's, it's a good time. I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you. So how are you doing today? Good, I'm doing good. Uh, today was kind of a long one, but I'm doing good. Yeah. It's so hot. How, wait, how, why are you in a beanie? It's so hot. Uh, it's because I haven't had a haircut in nine weeks. And, uh, okay, I, fair I, enough. I feel like I've worn the black hat for about seven weeks now, and I was like, I have to change it up a little bit. After berating Alex for his very wintry attire, we got on to the main topic. What's your name and where did you train? Uh, my name is Alex Condor and I trained at the Guildford School of Acting. How did you find it? How, how was your three years? GSA was the only school, uh, the only UK school that I auditioned for. Mm -hmm. um, it was, uh, for some reason, something really drove me to GSA. I remember sitting in physics class and just like looking up top 10 musical theater schools in the UK and seeing GSA and going on their website. And once I got over here, I realized that there are more that kind of have the same conser conservatoire feel to them. But yeah. That's what I was looking for because I was really worried about going to university in America where I'd have to do math, English, science, and history. Yeah. I didn't realize how much American tuition cost until I had a conversation with someone who lives over there. Uh, luckily I came here. Hey, Yay! Just, yeah, there we go. We can get all dark and sad, but I came here. I got out of it. I was so excited. I, I found a lot, of my, a lot of my passion through uh, theater, throughout the community theaters mm -hmm. and, and, and through school. So tell us about Luna Gale. Why did you pick Luna Gale? So I, uh, I, I spent a summer in Chicago uh, in 2016. I spent, uh, I spent seven weeks there. The National High School Institution's uh, Cherubs program with Northwestern University. Uh, it was, it's a very long name. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was the best seven weeks of my life uh, still to this day. Mm -hmm. um, it was one of the most artistically um, influential things that ever happened in my entire life. We had a whole class that studied this text analysis of this play of Luna Gale. We, we never, we, it was not, it wasn't, it wasn't one, it wasn't a text analysis thing where we got up and did the, where we got up and did it. It was just one where we literally just analyzed the yeah. word and, and punctuation and things like that, which uh, the punctuation is very important in this play. I think I got, I got so engrossed in how specific the wording is placed and not, not only specific the, um, because it's so specific how easy it comes off the tongue. Yeah. It's, it, it's genuinely just people talking and like, you know, some, and like just how I've gone off on a rant and lost my train of thought, like people lose their train of thought in this, in this, you know, in yeah. this, like, it's a very human it's thing. Kind of like, it's just people living and, and living in these very real situations that, that I think a lot of people believe are unique cases, but really yeah. in, in genuine. And it's about uh, uh, the, uh, the adoptions, uh, adoption, um, uh, process in, in general. And so 
um, two, two parents uh, are found um, to have, I don't know, if, can I give spoilers on this? Not yeah, spoilers, well, if you want spoilers, to. Not, I won't give spoilers to the whole thing, but I'll, I'll, give, a, I'll give a little background. <laughs> um, it's it, just two parents, two young 19-year-old parents who are, uh, are found to be smoking meth um, while they're having a child. Yeah, not ideal, that is not it? Not ideal, not, not good. Uh, and it's centered around the story of the of the social services um, woman who helps their case. Yeah. Um, they go through a lot of ups and downs and find out a lot about her family, and it and it goes a little bit deeper than just um, custody of the baby. Yeah. Um, and it's and it and it really it does hit hard. Um, if anyone who's listening to this and wanting to come see it, I I, I want to put out there that it is a trigger warning for sexual assault and and rape. Uh, victims it, it does have a lot of um, graphic language about those kind of things so uh, this is just a pre-warning if you are coming to see this that there are uh, very graphic detailings of those things uh, it, it the rest of it is all time steps and pirouettes yeah you're absolutely right we have a dance <laughs> number actually um no. wow uh but you know it, but it, it makes a lot of sense in the story and it, yeah. and it it's very powerful so you know and it, it's it's nothing um it's nothing any kind of inappropriate of course um sure. have you found working on zoom How's that been? You know, I I just got done with Assassins um, at GSA. I asked my director, I, "What's the hardest thing really about doing this?" How, you know, and and she said, and she said, "It's the it's the patience with the frustration that you want to be there with the people and want to be, you know, working with these people in the room." Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and once I said that, she was like, "Just then just follow it. You follow your instinct because that's what." That's what really brought you to being a director as well is the instinct that an actor has. You 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 can you can sense the things that are going on in the in the play and then and help people find that as well. So um, that's that's really um, so overall. Zoom actually hasn't been that bad. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't think M mostly mostly because I'm not too focused on like the looks of it, you know, because, yeah. you know, a lot of the scenes in Luna Gale specifically are meetings, you know, it's a meeting in an office or it's a house meeting where, you know, the, uh, the social worker Caroline is coming over to one of the houses to meet the parents or, um, you know, the parent of the parent or someone yeah. else or anything like that. So it actually, the language of it does a little bit work while talking onto a camera, but, you know, and then there's, there's certain things that we'll try to do to make it a little bit more clear where they're at, but focusing on the text and really what the, with uh, using using a lot of silence. Silence is yeah. a huge thing in, in Luna Gale, the, the punctuation with, you know, beats and, and, uh, and cutting people off. So yeah, it, it's, it, it, it's been hard to find those rhythms, especially with the Wi-Fi delay and stuff like that. That's, that was yeah. the biggest technical problem right now. But other than that, honestly, like it's, it's felt actually really um, fulfilling because I, I have seen a change in the, you know, the first reading and already uh, we've, We've done every scene in the first act already, and it's already like a totally different place than where it was two days ago. And I'm, I'm number one. I feel like I haven't done much because my my actors have been so good. Like it, it really has been wild. Like I've been like, I, this is kind of creepy. I feel like I'm not doing much. Yeah, no, I I'm I feel the same. I, I I'll, they'll read it once. We'll talk through it. They'll do it again, and I'll like. I'll leave yeah, now. Bye, guys. 45 minutes on my schedule left to go. Uh, <laughs> let's do that one part seven more times, and then we'll figure out what to do after that. Well, I'm glad it's going so well, and by the sounds of things, you're really enjoying it, and that was that's the main thing that me and Liam wanted in the first place, just for everyone to have fun and yeah. meet new people and explore texts they've always wanted to, to delve deeper into, yeah. and um, why not do it in lockdown on Zoom? There's no reason. There's no reason not to. At all. I'm, I'm doing this, doing this in kind of uh, in cahoots with Moving House. Fantastic! Yeah. He's a multitasker. Moving House is the most stressful thing. Adds a pep to your step. Yeah, yeah, a, l a little bit of a fire under the ass. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. Yeah, adds a bit of danger. Just a bit, yeah. Ex like like an edge. Like there's stakes now. <laughs> Love it. Well, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow for Play Club. Yeah, Play Club. I love Play Club. I love it. I love it. It's my favorite thing. It brightens my day. Right, right. so well, have a good day and I'll see you soon. Bye, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. We're all a big fan of Play Club. I then got to chat to Natalie, who is directing Passion Killers by John Godber. Hello. I love how you're doing. I'm good. How are you? I'm very warm. Oh, bloody hell. You can watch Passion Killers on Friday the 3rd of July at 7pm. How's rehearsals? Going really well. I'm loving it. I think they, they understand how nerve-wracking it is for me as well, so they're taking that into consideration. What is your name and where did you train? 
So my name is Natalie Blur, and I trained at Al Renault. Lovely. How was that? How was that? Was that three years? It was three years, yes. And I loved every single second. The tears, the sweat, everything that came with it. Yeah, it's made me, as cringe as it sounds, it's made me into the person that I am today, not just as an actor, but going from musical theatre college to drama school, studying acting, was such a challenge because I was so used to being in this friendship bubble and I went to Alra on my own. I'm quite a confident person anyway, but just getting to meet so many new people and yeah, loved it. As part of that, did you move home or is it nearby? It's nearby, so I commute on the bus every morning. Awesome. Yeah. Well, lucky. <laughs> so tell us about Passion Killers. How, why, why did you choose Passion Killers out of the cacophony of plays out there? So originally I was going to make it easy for myself and just choose one of the plays that I just have on my shelf. But then I was like, why, why go safe? Like, this is an opportunity where I can push myself and challenge myself. And I was looking through drama online and I didn't have anything in mind. So no playwrights, no no genres or anything and I stumbled across Passion Killers and I thought oh my god this is going to be so much fun the sun was shining it was during that week where we had like sun all week yeah so, like oh I could just imagine myself near a beach now and I just thought it's it's a bit of fun it'll be light relief for everyone it's not too deep or thought-provoking and your cast is so lovely you've oh, got lovely. such a cracking cat well all the cast are stunning but yeah. Everyone's so friendly and so friendly and so like open to my ideas and my rambles and couldn't have asked for better. How are you finding working on Zoom? How how's that differing from say if you're in a studio? I absolutely hate technology. Like I'm getting used to it, but I'm so clumsy at the best of times. So trying to figure out how to work it has been. A <laughs> but I'm slowly getting there, and I think you know technology has been on the rise for years now, despite the coronavirus. So I think it's a good time to get used to it and just be thrown into the deep end, really. So it's not been too bad. Bit you know some Wi-Fi yeah. connections going a bit ski with, but apart from that, it's been okay. Touch wood. Oh, and how's how's life? How how are you doing? Are you have you finished now? I can't remember if you said you finished. I've, it's a difficult one because I've kind of finished, but they are well. Alra are inviting us back as fourth years because not only did we have a Manchester showcase, we were meant to have a London showcase as well, yeah. and obviously cancelled. So they kind of owe us that, and they owe us a show as well. Um, yeah. So I don't think a lot of us are going back just with like rent and stuff and housing situations but because I'm only 20 minutes away I'm, I think I'll definitely go back mm -hmm. at the minute yeah I'm just I'm soaking up the sun as much as I can I'm reading a lot I love reading I've joined an online book club which is uh very oh, exciting fun. I want to join a book club I mean I don't read though I want to, <laughs> I'm one of those people who would really wants to, to read yeah but I have that thing where I'll read and then I'll notice oh, I've just done three pages and I didn't actually take in anything that was just said my eyes were just scanning the words and I was my brain was going yeah you're reading you're reading yeah I was never a reader like I'd read plays and like news articles and stuff but I would like fiction and novels I was never really into and one day I was just like oh that looks like an interesting book I'll, I'll give it a go and I read it and I've been hooked ever since and mm -hmm. I think when when you find your genre I think it's good for acting as well because you get to relate to these these characters and I, I now understand what people say that the book's better than the film yeah so like I read the first Harry Potter again I mean the magic is just even more alive in your head it's so it's so weird because you think when you're actually watching it then, then you're engrossed in a film that's the most magical and exciting thing but actually nothing's better than your your own imagination can use that for my acting <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what research did you do over lockdown reread Harry Potter yes <laughs> you're gonna hate me I've never never ever read it hey it's I mean, never too late. Never too late. You've watched the films though, right? Hmm. I'll let you off. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you soon. See you soon. Oh, thank you so much for this. No worries. See you see soon. Bye. Bye. Next, I was joined by the lovely Bethany, who has yet to start her rehearsals. Hi, yeah, you're all right. Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. Have you had a nice day? I have. It's really nice. It's so hot and sunny. You can catch bad weather on the 12th of July at 2pm. Shall I ask you some of these questions then? You can ask me some of these questions. I'm hoping they're not about rehearsals because we haven't had one yet. Let me know if you know the answer to this one. Who are you and where did you train? Oh, 
my name is Bethany Holdsworth and I trained at Performance Preparation Academy. And how was that? Did you have a good time? Yeah, oh my god, I had the best time. I um, did my foundation there as well, so oh, wow. I did the whole four year shebang and wow. yeah, it was like the best four years ever. And so you're directing Bad Weather? Yes, I am. Tell us about Bad Weather. It's quite violent, but with maybe a little bit impossible redemption. Without giving away too much, the summary of the show is there has been a fight outside a Chinese restaurant involving two guys. And one of the guys has uh, been charged and sentenced to prison, whereas the other guy hasn't. And it's about life where life of this guy who has like gone off to prison and who he's left behind and actually is the other guy who was in the fight just as guilty um so it's a lot about you know the violence and also it's originally set in Middlesbrough and um it's kind of a sense of poverty and kind of life of lower class people and yeah. kind of what they have to deal with day to day really nice I think it's like one of those things that is really about real life Mm. And, or a side yeah. of real a, a side of life that is so real to some people but yeah. so alien to others yeah, exactly and so many so much of this does happen like there are lots of like young people in gangs who get led into things and so yeah. many other people get away with things and not obviously I don't want to go too much into it but arguably the guy who got away and wasn't sentenced or charged or anything arguably he did more than the other guy and it's also about the lies that goes around to protect other people um and that kind of group membership sort of thing to fit in and not fall out of the pack really really interesting to work with and have you directed before in any sense or is this your first time I haven't. it is my first time so i could say i um direct lots of stagecoach shows and make believes but nothing like that counts yeah, under the age of 16, you know, <laughs> I'm hoping it will be okay. I mean, this is, most people, people have not done it before in, in this, in this. Yeah, field. and do you know what's Definitely. really interesting is because I've looked at my cast and they are all very, well, bar one or two, I believe, are straight actor training. And I think I've got one from Lane who does musical theatre. So it's going to be really, really interesting because I, I studied musical theatre as well to kind of do like a straight play. And it's something that we don't touch upon on the musical theatre course, just oh. straight acting. Yeah. So I'm really, really excited to not only be directing, but learn so much from them. Well, this is the thing. So many directors aren't even actors at all. I yeah. have no experience of acting at all. So anyone can, not anyone can do it, but there's so many avenues you can take to end up directing. I'm just so glad that it, it's nice that you're so enthusiastic and, and it's clear you're so enthusiastic. And like you say, I haven't even started yet, it. but I can sense. Oh my God, I'm such that. like a freak as well. I'm such like an organised person and I'm there like, got to know, you know. So I'm really, really excited to try something new. And if it falls flat on its face, it's just a rehearse reading. Mm. I can, you know, it'll be fine. Yeah. I'm just so excited like to get it on its feet, meet new people. Yeah. It'll be really fun and exciting. And hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll be really good. Just think you've got ages. Yeah, oh my god, I've got time. I know, there's me, I've got my little schedule ready. Today we did our last scene. <gasps> did you? How did that go? I, I can't, I feel like I can't take any responsibility for anything <laughs> because I've just, just sat back and let it all kind of happen. I love that. Um, so it's a blessing in a way, mm. but also when somebody says, so what did you do? Or how did you like, you know, get the best out of them? I'd be like, well, just let them let them do it how they wanted really <laughs> I think that's such an important kind of way of looking at it because that you know the actors kind of do know how they want to do something and yeah. you, know, you can kind of say oh yeah this is how I want it but it's them who do like the dirty work of it all, yeah and it? I give the occasional guidance but I, and I've said to them all because they are all playing the same couple but in their own pairs I said to them from day one choose your own path Sounds so philosophical, but I believe last line in the show, Lewis, who's playing the, um, who says the last line in the show, I said to him, I'm happy for you to decide what that line means for you and, and how you're saying that line, because ultimately the audience will interpret it in, in their own way anyway. And again, don't, don't get trapped and, and overthink it because at the end of the day, 
you can mat meticulously work and, and say, I'm thinking this exact thought or I'm doing this action on this line. Somebody else will not hear that. You know, I, I've just, I've just said, as long as what you're thinking is cemented and secure, yeah, I'm happy because they're, they're doing the job as a and, storyteller. Yeah. 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 And they're teaching me a lot. I, I used to be quite a stickler for what I say goes, or if I'd have a very set vision in my head, they've all just surprised me so much and, and, and given me so much. And I've been like, yes, that, that, what you just said there, let's use that. Or I've never even thought of it that way. And I prefer that way. So let's just, let's do it that way. They're great. And I'm sure your cast will be equally as great. I'm so excited to like meet them all. And you know, they all seem lovely on our group chat and fingers crossed it's just going to be so good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they've all volunteered. Everyone, yeah. everyone who applied within the, the time bracket we set is in something. They wouldn't volunteer if they didn't want to do it. And I understand why people haven't volunteered. I know it, like now's a tricky time. I mean, I, I have barely sung. Singing used to be like my saving grace. And now I just can't do it because I'm not doing it where I should be doing it. Yeah. So by channeling my creativity in a leadership role, yeah, I'm really enjoying it because it's it, because it is new to me and I'm still finding my feet. But it's, it's also something that you can take into, you know, when you go back and you're singing again, being a director yourself, you can kind of see where it comes from. Mm. Oh, it's all exciting. I'm ready. I've got my first rehearsal on Saturday. Woo! And so yes. Oh, it's so exciting. I'm so glad you're happy and raring to go. I literally look like such a sad like I've got nothing else in my life. I'm like, yeah, but I'm doing bad weather. <laughs> Go and enjoy the last of the sun. And I'll chat to you very soon, no doubt. See you later. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye. I then got to talk to Tanya, who is directing All Over Lovely. Hello. Hi, are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. You can catch this on the 2nd of July at 7pm. So how, how's rehearsals going? Yeah, really good. I'm so happy with where we're at, considering that we've had such limited time. I was saying to the girls, you know, usually we'd spend like a whole day, all day, every day, yeah. in studios, doing, you know, running the play, talking through things, getting to know yeah. each other, all of this stuff. But we've done it all in this space of time. And the quality of the work has been, you know, no less than I'd expect from a show that would be, you know, live on stage. Yeah, it just goes to show it, it is doable. Yeah, in any any circumstance really first question is what's your name and where did you train my name is Tanya Gasser and I trained at the Royal Birmingham Conservatoire I'm in the class of 2020 <laughs> and whereabouts are you from are you from Birmingham or have you did you move no, I'm from London I'm from South East London Greenwich um and I moved to Birmingham because I'd always wanted to train at the Birmingham School of Acting as it was known then I've I have bases in both places now I'm in London at the moment I'm at home at my parents house tell us about all over lovely what what's it about how are you tackling it yeah, so All Over Lovely is a two-hander play about two women who have complete opposite ideals mm -hmm. of, of their perspectives of feminism and what it means to be a woman and how a woman should, you know, navigate the world. And all their morals and all their kind of values that come into that, I think, seep from when they're a lot younger um, where they discuss their childhood as cousins that lived together and were thrown in together to share a bedroom at the age of seven. I think it's just tackling identity and um, their sexuality because they do end up getting in a nice relationship, which is completely toxic. I think that's also representative of how society has made feminism this thing that shouldn't be as complicated as it is. Yeah. And in trying to find equality for women, it's come with all these other connotations and these other ex expectations as well. What your pursuit at life or career should be. And I think the play really tries to find an answer for that, but fundamentally, it doesn't and I think both characters A and B kind of show which in itself to me kind of represents a lack of identity mm. um, just shows the kind of struggle in trying to find where they belong and when life kind of throws you lemons or throws you a curveball that you're not expecting how do you kind of work things out and are you kind of willing to kind of give up what you once were fighting for at the beginning as a young kind of anarchist <laughs> um, <laughs> which A is, 
yeah. to kind of live a life now that you would have seen as being a sellout she grows her own vegetables and she's obsessed with creating a utopia and making a life that you know has real equality for men women children everybody having a role everybody pulling their weight but also sharing everything then she ends up supplying to Sainsbury's and she feels that she says that a lot and she's kind of you can tell that it's not something she's proud of. The opposite being B, who has just capitalised really on her femininity, on her sexuality, on making a political statement by having a lesbian relationship, which she, you know, doesn't speak to, doesn't want to give away, is too personal to her until we find out at the end. It yeah. is kind of the only place she's felt safe but that's that's what we see you're either this kind of ugly feminine ugly lesbian for want of a better term that is just crazy about femi- um, feminism and attacks men and all of this and yeah. that's the stereotype there and then you see the kind of one who's obsessed with image and then they're looked down upon anyway because it's like they're just working their way up in the world by using their sexuality and it's like you can't really win how is it with um because as you said, it, it, it's two characters, but you've split it up. How, how were you finding it working with the different girls? Are they interpreting the text quite differently or, or have they kind of grasped it in a very similar way? Um, yeah, so I've split it into five sections, which aren't necessarily um, how the play's kind of scenes are divided up. Each kind of section tackles another strand of these women and their lives. And so what's interesting about having different pairs um, play each section is it feels like they're focused on, say, their childhood or their motherhood or their business life or their dreams or aspirations or their relationship. So each one kind of it goes, there's, there's, there's comments on um, everything throughout, but each section feels like it does heavily focus on one theme. And so the interpretations um, are actually quite, there's actually quite a good through line um but the interpretations and I think having different girls works having different interpretations for different moments in their lives because I feel like there are moments when we get more vulnerability from each of the characters and we can also see when they're putting up a wall and I think it's just made really clear when it's a different actor presenting that side of their characteristic and how is working on zoom how are you using it are you working with it against it how, how's that all going you know what it's not been it's not been quite the battle i thought it would be i think because we're in this zoom age and people are just trying to connect with each other over zoom and i feel like in the play they both want answers for why their relationship has failed yeah. they both are trying to reconnect and I think it feels like a very almost a um a metaphor in itself that you can't quite get access but you're potentially being quite deep over zoom with yeah. someone or chatting to someone that you love or you know you kind of feel that atmosphere when you're having a great conversation or the inverse when you're having a bad conversation and I think it comes across well on zoom because I think they both put walls up this little space that is the screen that is their world it feels like okay this is the only space that I have that's my safe space outside of that it's kind of like do I let it in or do I not let it in there's been a couple of challenges in terms of say stage directions that are vital yeah. to the play key moments that would definitely have worked better on stage mm. but you know we've thought of ideas and come up with hopefully what presents as a good replacement or, um <laughs> for it i'm giggling because i just know what it is <laughs> <laughs> the intimacy is difficult to to show because they're rooted firmly in their morals and their beliefs there's kind of room for some abstract take and i think it shouldn't really be shied away from that this performance is on zoom people aren't expecting to see a whole set behind us it's about the text it's about the words it's about the feelings it's about the characters and hopefully it's a good show for everyone it will be i'm excited to see it and um i'm excited to share it because i kind of just I, I was like hi directors here here is what you're gonna do bye and then that's it and <laughs> and i'm none the wiser so i'm i'm so excited to um finally yeah, no i'm glad that i kind of you know you just kind of gave me this play and i was like, all right i haven't read it before and i read it and i was like oh how am i gonna do this and then it just it just comes the more and more you read it the more you get into it 
I met the girls and I was like, oh, great. Okay, I've cast this right, <laughs> hopefully. I'm like, okay, all right, this is working, this is working. And then it just sort of falls into place. Like everything does, like you were saying, like it's possible to make this work over Zoom. Like we've had limited time, but we've managed to do the work. And I think it's just, it's quite possible that things are going to keep moving in this direction with um, other shows yeah, and other stuff, people, other initiatives people make. And this one, this one's a great one. It's really getting big and I'm quite happy that um, you and Liam have created this because I think it's something that we needed a celebration of 2020 grad yeah I think I think we're all kind of in the same boat and we're all kind of you know giving each other the space to figure things out and just make a good show and that's what it's really all about isn't it as far as we're concerned as soon as the two weeks are over the next whole the next project begins who knows what's next yeah well thanks so much enjoy the rest of your rehearsals i mean you you don't have yeah, we're on the last kind of ones now i've just had i've had two groups final rehearsals today we're having a check-in and then a group run of everything so everyone's excited to see the whole show together it's in a really good place i'm so excited to show it i'm very excited <laughs> all have right see you, see you later bye bye, bye. Next up is Aoife Beaumont, who has written her own play that's being featured in the Gradfest this year. Hello, good morning. How are you doing? You all right? I'm fine. I'm dishevelled because of this heat, but I'm totally oh, fine. It's so warm, isn't it? It's like nothing I've ever experienced in this country. It's crazy. It's yeah. like you're in the tropics. Horses in horse boxes will be on the 7th of July at 7 p.m. Yeah, how are you getting on? Have you been busy? Have you been? Oh, so busy. Um, Amazing. That's so cool. I mean, it's such a fantastic idea, Alice. Like, the stuff that you're coming up with is just, like, brilliant. It's really, like, thorough, the whole thing. It's just fantastic. It's almost like we've had no choice but to be thorough. But, well, because it's taken off more than we ever anticipated. But also, if that is the case, we want it to be as good and fleshed out as it can be. We don't want to do anything half-hearted. Make the programme as full as, as it can be, so... Yeah, it's it is full. It's, for them. It is brilliant, and I think that um, the other thing is next year's graduates may very well be in a very similar position. Yeah. Um, like there's a lot of talk. I don't know from people I know who are going into third year next year, and their yeah. all their schools are saying the kind of same thing that they're not going to have public performances, or you know, like they're all going to be closed houses and you know this is something that can go on for years yeah. and years and years to come indeed and and it's so nice because some people have invited agents and stuff and, and that's, wow. that's that was like that was my intention that's that's something that was important to me that people could feel like they could invite whoever they wanted to come and watch and they are and that's really great and really exciting so I just hope we do them justice by giving them this awesome platform that's fantastic that's so cool I'm so glad to hear that Righto, so I'm going to ask you some of these questions. Okay. They're very easy. Okay. Very easy. So let's start off with, uh, what is your name and where did you train? <laughs> so my name is Aoife Beaumont and I trained on the Acting for Stage and Screen course at PPA Performance Preparation Academy in Guildford. Awesome. How was that? Was it everything you thought it would be? I think it was nothing I thought it would be <laughs> and everything at the same time. It was a fantastic experience. I learned so much, not only about acting, which is what I thought I would learn about, but um, team building skills and ensemble skills and how to, um, and leadership skills, confidence skills. Like, um, And I think that's the fantastic thing about doing a degree in acting is that you learn so much about the craft which you're going to do. Yeah fingers crossed in the industry but you also learn so many things about yourself and other people as well it's amazing I agree with the whole because I mean I, I wouldn't know how to do any of this and it's not like they've sat me down and said this is how you do an interview this is how you do a podcast yeah. this is how you become an artistic director loosely um but uh it's a confidence thing. It is, it's a isn't it? Social skills thing. It, it, you learn and take so much in without ever realizing. Absolutely. And I think it's from like learning from others and really being thrown into the deep end, particularly in third year when you kind of have to take charge in a way um, of your own career. Obviously, we were very fortunate to be given a lot of guidance on that front as well. But you really do have to know yourself and know what you want. Yeah. And, 
and that's really scary but it's also very exciting and I think that that yeah absolutely we do get given skills that help us to go on to be good creatives Mm -hmm. as well as good actors which is fantastic in in an industry where there's we have no control over the industry it's nice to have control over ourselves and how we perceive ourselves and and sell ourselves is the wrong word but advertise ourselves and and um you know we are our own product our own business so empowering to know that we that like you say we do have an element of control and we can to an extent well no not even to an extent we can be the change that we want to see within this industry and as young graduates that is really empowering that's really exciting and I don't think there is a lot of industries right now that is um giving us so much attention and so much time we're seeing so many people particularly on social media giving graduates the time of day and I think that's absolutely fantastic that people are willing to listen and it's really cool it's yeah this started as a something for grads to do and now it's becoming a mega showcase of here's the grads of 2020 we don't a virus turns up oh whatever we'll keep going and we'll make our own things yeah absolutely we'll make our own things to do yeah you just can't stop the creatives can you you just really can't we're going to do it whether whether corona likes it or not and on that note tell us about horses in horse boxes it's an a small play that i wrote back in uh, earlier this year actually so not that long ago it's a better it's a love story between a boy and a girl it starts at the end of their relationship so we open the play with dara telling mark that she's that she's not going to get married to him and they're engaged and she decides that she's not going to get married to him anymore and he replies very kind of linearly by just going okay and we basically see them separately go on a journey of transition in their lives mm-hmm. and how they deal with the breakup and the kind of a masking of themselves through that process they've been very connected up until this point and they don't really know who they are and they do that in two very different ways and that's kind of what the play is about so it touches on gender roles it also touches on the silent epidemic of male suicide but it, but it but it's light-hearted as well and it's fun and I think that really came yeah. across be through with the guys it's just it's a story it's a it's a love story it's the end of a love story so yeah and tackling tricky topics with humor as long as it's done in a sensitive way is often the best way in my opinion because it it loosens people up it, it gets people in, a, in an interesting mind frame so when something serious or, or comes up they're in a place of oh wow as yeah. opposed to oh this is wow okay this is I don't know I don't know how what's going on in the brain I'm not a psychiatrist or anything like that but it but it it does work humor tackling things through humor is just very wise I I'm a big advocate (laughs) I absolutely agree I think that in life um through the hardest times we are humorous and we do joke and I think as humans we kind of surprise ourselves at how cynical we are in difficult situations when we do make a crack a joke that's something I really wanted to get across in the play was during difficult times yes there is humor in difficult times and it in life it's not all weary dreary otherwise we wouldn't we wouldn't have that range in emotions so it's important to try and shove it all in and yeah from an audience perspective as well I think it really it it connects the audience to the characters a little bit more I think and allows them to feel comfort in the situation and open themselves up to feeling vulnerable and to tackling the topics that are discussed within the play what inspired so cliche what inspired you but was there something in particular that made you think ah I want to write about this or was it just something you manifested in your your little <laughs> brain one day? I think as a like as someone of our age, like we're at the age where people are starting to get into like serious relationships. Mm-hmm. And I don't have and I'm watching a lot of my friends kind of get into very serious relationships and then um how those relationships like play out and yeah. um yeah. the end of those relationships and the beginnings of those relationships. And I think that male female relationships are very different to female female relationships or male male relationships. And I'm yeah. in a relationship with a girl. So I wanted to explore um how other couples communicate and deal with their issues and uh, the dangers of um, bad communication and what that can do to a couple or feeling like you can't speak so yeah I guess that inspired me but the the storyline is very simple I think that's why it's 
hopefully going to work over Zoom. <laughs> and how, um, how is working on Zoom? How are you finding that? Yeah, it's really, really interesting. We've been well prepared. Um, PPA, we did um, blue stockings in a week, which is a bit of a monster. Um, so I had some experience before going into it, which I think was very valuable. I think it's amazing to be able to connect with people like on Zoom, like people that I've never met before and, you know, making that connection and getting to know people and um, swapping ideas and stuff is just fantastic. It's I think some people have been saying how it's been hard to connect because you can't make real eye contact and they're not actually there. But I have found I have connected with so well yourself included, so many people so vividly. Mm, yeah. and, and and it's it's amazing. I'll never shun technology again. I've, I've <laughs> it's like Liam. I me and Liam had never met before this. And wow, that's we, incredible. Yeah, and now we've got this little partnership going and I keep forgetting that we've never met in person. God bless you. I know it it is it is fantastic and I think also like in a time like this it is important that we do touch base with other people that we don't know especially yeah. from other drama schools other people graduating we're all going through the same thing you know like and it's so nice to be able to just sit down and do the thing we love to do regardless of not being together. Also I feel like communication skills have really been improved because of it because you really have to use your words to articulate your thoughts you can't you don't have the luxury of using your body or um your body language to kind of show anything so you're really relying on your ability to speak yeah. which is, is so difficult as well well I'm so glad you're well it's saying it seems like you're enjoying it and having a great time and I hope that this isn't the last of you and <laughs> your writing and your potential zoom plays I hope I hope that everyone takes something from this and just only wants to do more maybe yeah. the, the 2021 grads will be performing <laughs> uh, I was trying to make a pun out of horses and horse boxes <laughs> Oh no, absolutely. I think that, you know, there's no, we've proved that there's no, and you guys particularly have proved that there's no limitations to what we can do. And all we have to do is put our heads down and our minds to it and stick together and we can really achieve anything, you know? Okay. So it's amazing. We can. <laughs> Woo, I used to be such a pessimist. I, really <laughs> I know, no. I control what I put out into the universe and what the universe gives back quite philosophical but absolutely I totally I totally agree you know it's all about what you put out into the world and and we are putting out some good vibes so they better yeah. better start hitting us you know <laughs> feel it right so we'll have a wonderful day with family and everyone and your partner and go and enjoy the rest of this heat before the storms arrive oh. everywhere <laughs> thank you so much Alice I really appreciate it anytime bye Bye. Whilst we do this, can Shakira be on or can you hear her? <laughs> she, she's got to go. Oh, really? Finally, I got to talk to Nadia and Charlie, who are directing House and Garden, and you can catch that on the 8th and 10th of July at 7 pm. I've, I've just turned her down so I can still watch the um, hips in action. <laughs> how is them? Um, how, how are rehearsals going? So good. Literally so good. Better than I actually ever could have thought them to have gone. We're not in a room, you know, but I still feel so much energy in the Zoom room. And like, we have actually achieved so much this week. I know like our rehearsal schedule is like full on, like we are actually like there all day as if we're actually in real life. But we have actually achieved so much. And we're I actually- We're also doing two plays, so. We are doing two plays, exactly. So it is a lot, a lot, a lot, but we have got through like, I would say a good 90%, but we haven't tried running them at the same time yet. Mm, that's the uh, tricky thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'll be like the technical nightmare. But I think it'll be fine. And even if it's not fine, like at the end of the day, we're just some grads trying to do what we love. Mm -hmm. And so there shouldn't really be a pressure of like it being perfect. We're just like having a good time. What are your names and where are you from? Uh, I'm Nadia Violet Johnson. Uh, I'm from East London. I'll be graduating from Arts Ed. And I'm Charlie Booker. And I'm also from London. And I'll also be graduating from Arts Ed. Whoop, whoop. You're the same person. Basically. Potentially, yeah. So why did you pick House and Garden? And what on earth made you think, <laughs> yes, let's do it on Zoom? So basically, in lockdown, 
uh, all three of us in this podcast actually are members of the Arts Ed Play Club, uh, which I was the founding member and Nick Myers, it was her turn and she um, suggested House and Garden. So we read it and we had an absolute blast, didn't we? Yeah, it's just really, really funny. And obviously, I think it was towards the beginning of lockdown that we read it. And it was just something that was so nice and uplifting. And originally it was Charlie who wanted to do it. And then when... Um, Liam approached me to direct a play. I was like, oh, I don't want to do like any old play that you could just do. I was like, I want to do something that can specially be tailored to Zoom. I was looking around for loads of plays, but obviously it's really hard to find a play out of the blue because th- where do you begin with something like that? When I cast my mind back to what have we done in Play Club, I was thinking, oh my God, House and Garden can be done over two Zooms at once. And that would be such a challenge. And that's kind of what spurred me to do it. And then, so I said to Liam, hey, I want to do this, house and garden, blah, 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 blah. And then I started thinking about rehearsals. And then I was like, how on earth am I going to be in two Zooms at once? That's just not going to be a thing. And I was like, I need a trusty pal to help me do this. And I originally asked Nadia just to be involved in like a tiny little, (laughs) tiny little way. Like, oh, hey, Nadia, I'll do all the rehearsals. Then when we get to like running it, I can you be in one one Zoom and I'll be in the other Zoom and we'll, uh, we'll note it because I can't watch both of them at the same time. And then Nadia... You can tell the end. Yeah, well, then I was just like, well, if I'm going to be involved in a little bit, why not all of it, you know? I just like working with Charlie. Like, we work together as dance captains uh, in <laughs> Nice Work If You Can Get It, which is our third day final show. And I really had a great time, and I just thought, if Charlie's going to do this, I know it's going to be great, and I want a piece. But also... <laughs> but also, also a bit. But also, yes, to be fair, like, fun. and like going back to when we worked here in Nice Work, I have never worked with someone who's potentially more enthusiastic than me. And I, I think Nadia is. Look, you know, no half measures. You're either in <laughs> or you're out. <laughs> Honestly, best cast ever. It's hard because it's like, a, it's quite a big cast. The cast of 14. Hard to manage, but I mean, everyone's on top of everything, you know? And also everyone's so enthusiastic and Mm. like brings energy and we're all doing this for free so it's like everyone's just doing they're doing it because they want to be there you know if any of you know house and garden it is crazy but we have people throwing plates we have people hiding in bushes we have people jumping in fountains and to the extent that we can do it on a zoom it is to be done there's so much action there's so much action so that's another thing that we were thinking about we're like how are we going to do this and everyone just brings their ideas we're all bouncing off each other in the room the zoom Room. I've just been thinking how much you can do from the comfort of your bed. I've been sitting <laughs> in my bed doing this, like every little little bit of this. It's just nuts. And also it's so lovely. Like we have such a widespread cast. Like we have a big cast and we have a big cast of like loads of people from different drama schools. So like everyone has had like completely different training as such from their different places. And it's just so refreshing to like not always come from the same angle. Not that we did at drama school, mm. but people just have different ideas because they've learned about different stuff at their time at drama school and they can teach us just as much as we can like give to them if that makes sense even Uh, one thing that you forget is so significant but actors and musical theatre actors have completely different training completely different training and and we only touch the surface of some things that the actors do yeah i discussed this with one of us actually um he was asking us about um how our training might be different and i was like well if you have like if I have a screwdriver in like my acting toolkit, you probably just have seven screwdrivers all with different heads. And uh, we just have one we try and jam in every hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, not in a bad way, just in like with, a, with lots of enthusiasm, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's different. And it's just so nice to learn from everyone. But yeah. also like have the like a, a shared experience because this is something that has like never happened before fingers crossed will will never happen for you know won't happen for a long time so it's just like we're all grads we're all in the same boat and we just all want to support each other really yeah and make theatre magic albeit on zoom both sessions so people can watch one one night and one the other and it doesn't matter which order does it no it does not matter so basically the beauty is they are two completely um standalone plays that just happen to be interwoven uh quite frequently but yeah it really doesn't matter if you watch garden first or house first but please watch both the definition is it's a diptych i think a diptych of plays 
Um, and I actually Googled what that word meant. And it's like, um, it's normally used for, you know, those photo frames oh, that have like yeah. two and they, they like have a hinge. Yeah. That is honestly what house and garden is. Like you have one thing with like one mood that is house. And then you have another thing that is another mood, which is garden. And also like Nadia and I were discussing how it is an Alan Akebourne play. And I think it was just before 2000. Yeah. Maybe I want to say 1999. Yeah. When it, um, it was first yeah. performed. Basically, we were saying, like, we don't want it to be an old school vibe kind of thing. So what we've done, like, we want it to be, like, classical but contemporary. Mm. Um, and we've got a soundtrack that I won't delve much more into, but the soundtrack is just mwah, chef's kiss. It, it, <laughs> that's the thing that links both House and Garden is this glorious soundtrack that we have created alongside rehearsals and it's very exciting yeah we just wanted it to be very fizzy very busy we said like a bottle of schlur <laughs> just want it to be like so fun a little bit grown up bit of fun but it's not too exactly. grown up you know it's grown up is it not you don't know exactly love we love it what flavor schlur white grape or red grape i don't know i don't know i think do you know what i think it's a bit of both i don't know maybe. I don't, yeah yeah white maybe. grape with elderflower perhaps Absolutely, yeah yeah bit of spice yeah. Mm. but just spice to that Oh, fantastic. This thing is just going to be brilliant. Like, just looking through the programme. First of all, I'm getting emails that look so professional. They're just The great. emails are amazing. And, like, getting all the updates, looking at the Q&As, looking at the live classes. It's just, like, it's become so big. So fingers, toes, fingers and toes crossed. <laughs> <laughs> and you hope for the best. <laughs> oh, my God. Enjoy your Saturday. It is Saturday, right? Enjoy your Saturday. I'll see you tomorrow see you later bye bye and there you have it thank you so much for listening and taking the time to listen to all our directors we are so grateful that they have taken their free time for free um to produce some amazing play readings for the gradfest 2020 i'll see you all soon for the next episode of the gradfest podcast bye